Hi guys, my name is Dan and welcome to another episode of CryptoLite. Today, I want to introduce to you an ICO that was brought to my attention by one of our community members today, and that is the project Chimera. The reason I want to cover this project, even though there are other projects before it in the queue, is because the project is currently in phase one of the pre-ICO, which is a 30% discount and is due to end in just over another two days. So it's time-sensitive news for those who might be interested in this pre-ICO. To find out more about Chimera ICO, keep watching this video. Chimera is a blockchain gaming platform. So where you might build dApps on a platform like Ethereum or NEO, on Chimera, you will be building a game. Unlike most current blockchain projects where the project is the team's first time in the blockchain scene, the team behind Chimera is very experienced and have been in the blockchain scene for a very long time. The team behind Chimera has already developed two early blockchain projects, the first being Namecoin. Namecoin may not be a name that is familiar to many of you. It was actually Bitcoin's first fork back in 2013. It is also the first blockchain project to implement merge mining, which we just covered in the Elastos review. And it's also the first blockchain project to introduce decentralized DNS. This is a solution to problems like DDoS attacks, etc. They were also the first project to attach identity information to digital assets, so you can kind of see them as the pioneer of blockchain identity projects like Ontology and The Key today. The second project that the, te that the team has developed is called HunterCoin. HunterCoin was the first blockchain decentralized game and it was released back in 2014 as an experimental test to see how blockchain technology could handle full-on game worlds. Hunter Coin is a simple game where you walk around to collect coins and you can also fight other players to collect their coins. These coins you collect can then be cashed in for actual crypto and the process was called human mining. Hunter Coin was very successful back in its day and achieved over 35,000 users and raised over $1 million within a few weeks of its launch. In those days, that was a very big thing. The game didn't need a server because it was a blockchain project and the same technology that was used on Hunter Coin is improved on and used in the current creation of Chimera. So already you know that the technology Chimera will be employing will definitely work to a certain extent at least for simple games. So that's a huge reduction risk in, for potential investors. By combining their experience with both of these projects, this veteran team is now releasing Chimera, which is a gaming platform. The gaming industry is a very lucrative industry. It is currently worth $115 to $116 billion and is rising at the rate of 6.2% annually. In the blockchain space, we've seen so many blockchain games try to cre uh, be created and claim a share of the gaming market, for example, CryptoKitties, Spells of Genesis, Tron Dogs, etc. But none of the current games are really great open-ended games. They are all simple games that can't really be compared to mainstream games like Final Fantasy or Dota, etc. I mean, a simple game like CryptoKitties literally single-handedly crippled the entire Ethereum network. There is no way that any current blockchain can host a complicated game. But that is where Chimera hopes to change the scene. Besides offering scalability to keep up with the creation of complex games, and we'll cover this in their tech later, the platform will also be an ecosystem that will offer some very interesting features. Firstly, there will be asset management. So through the Namecoin technology, users will own their own assets, their own digital assets. So for example, you will own your character skins, the items, etc. Owning isn't just being able to use it in the game. Owning it means that you will be able to sell your asset. Okay? The, being able to sell your asset is the true test of actually owning your asset. This is coupled with their human mining feature on the platform, which basically means you can earn money by playing games. So as you play games, the items that you find in-game can be traded on the platform for Chi tokens, which is the native token uh, for Chimera. Now this aspect of the project, being able to trade your skins, etc., may sound very similar to the Engine blockchain project, which also monetizes in-game digital assets. But the difference is where Engine has to partner with games that are not owned by them or run on the blockchain, Chimera's asset management will be run 
on the games that are hosted by them on their own platform, meaning it's likely to have a lot less resistance. Obviously, each game still gets to decide on their own in-game rules, but when the game decides to be built on Chimera, the games know and accept that they are building into an existing ecosystem. Chimera will also be making themselves attractive to game developers by de providing a developer hub, which is basically where all the essential tools they need to integrate their game into blockchain uh, will be given to them. So they're making it very easy to be built on a blockchain. Chimera Studio and Incubator will also help to provide crowdfunding and dev support for game creators. There will be no server fees because the games are not launched on a server, it's launched on the blockchain. And their platform is fully compatible with every major operating system like Windows, um, iOS, Linux, etc. out there. Besides the trading platform for digital assets that we mentioned earlier, they will also have a community hub and multiplayer arena with organized tournaments and real money rewards for gamers. So there's a lot of attractive features in this project for both developers and gamers. Now let's take a look at their tech to understand the actual platform technology a little bit better. The main thing we need to understand about this project is how can they scale to meet the requirements of multiple, many, many intensive games. The answer is they do scaling through game channels and DAUs, which stand for Decentralized Autonomous Universes. I'll explain what these terms mean. Imagine that you have a blockchain like Ethereum. Currently, if I was to build a big game on the blockchain, it would take up a significant part of the bandwidth, storage, and throughput of the entire blockchain. So literally, one game could block up the whole blockchain, which is exactly what happened with Ethereum and CryptoKitties. Now imagine if I move the entire game off the blockchain to create a sidechain. This separate entity is called a state channel, or in this case, they call it a game channel. Now, as you play the game and you do like, let's say battle with another player, for example, a transaction happens within the game. The entire transaction happens on the game channel, not on the blockchain. The final result of the transaction though, which is only a very small piece of the data, is then translated back to be recorded on the blockchain. So this is their off-chain scaling solution, okay? And it really saves a lot of space and uh, storage space on the blockchain. It is actually very similar to Lightning Network, the proposed scaling solution for Bitcoin for those who are familiar with Lightning. And even if you weren't familiar with Lightning, if you understand its explanation, you sort of understand what Lightning Network is all about. Now, if you have a very, very big game, okay, that very big game can be further divided or shattered into smaller sections. Each section then functions as its own game channel, and when you play in that section, you only interact with the immediate surroundings. So for example, when you play an RPG and you were to move or teleport from one town to another town, the game will go into a loading mode, right? So in this case, in this process, that would be you moving from one sub game channel to another sub game channel this method of sharding the game or a big game into smaller sections is known as decentralized autonomous universes or dau in the chimera project now let's take a closer look at the transactions on each game channel all right for a transaction to happen you need at least two parties and in blockchain style, if you have two parties, you need a consensus between the two parties, meaning you need both parties to agree that the trade is correct before it can be accepted onto the blockchain. So for example, if I buy an item from you in game, both of us will have to agree that I have received the item and you have received the right amount of currency for the transaction to be a valid transaction. In the ideal case, okay, only the start and end point, only two little bits of the whole transaction is combined together to a small data to be recorded on the blockchain. All the little bits in between okay, can be disregarded. So the result is that the transaction is recorded is very, very small and not burdensome for the blockchain. However, if there is a dispute, okay, only the sequence of events that are agreed on is recorded and the dispute sequence is not recorded. 
If the dispute gets resolved, then the sequence that is agreed on is recorded and the rest is discarded. But if you look at the second and third diagram here, you will see that the bits that are recorded is still more than just two points, okay? It's still a little bit bigger. So the loophole of this whole system is that the dispute record that should be recorded on the blockchain will always be longer or bigger than the simple straightforward cases. So if someone really wanted to disrupt the system, they can basically um, sabotage it by creating a lot of disputes and potentially clog up the blockchain. So the way that Chimera addresses this loophole is through what is known as ephemeral timestamps. Think of this as basically silent snapshots, photoshots of the transactions that can be used by the blockchain to check who was at fault. And then the party at fault will have to pay the penalty, which is the entire cost of the dispute. So this will then make it very uneconomical for people to intentionally cause disputes. Last thing to mention about their tech is their consensus algorithm. The actual consensus algorithm that is used on the blockchain is proof of work. So you will ideally need special GPU and hardware to mine it efficiently. Now the foundation of Chimera's technology is basically based on Bitcoin's technology because Namecoin was a fork of Bitcoin, Huntercoin was a fork of Namecoin, and now Chimera is a fork of Huntercoin. So it's basically a very much improved version of Bitcoin's older technology rather than a brand new blockchain technology like DPoS, etc. Now, I can break this technology down to explain to you the principles behind it, which I just did. But the truth is no one, not me or anyone, can tell you whether or not it will work. Theoretically, it sounds right. It sounds like a very effective scaling solution and it should work. But no one can really tell you that it will work. The true test of this platform will not be with the first few games that it launches, which I imagine the first few games will be quite simple games. Because their technology already worked on Hunter Coin, so I'm expecting that in the early stages, with just a few and simple projects, uh, it will work. The true test for this platform will come when they have many projects running on it at the same time and the games will be heavier games like MOBAs or real-time strategy or MMORPG and even virtual reality games, which is part of their roadmap. So one of the risks in investing in ICOs or even pre-ICOs like this one is that you don't know that they can deliver. You hope that they do and if they do, the returns will be very great. So it's high risk for high gains. Now, with this model of game channels, theoretically, the blockchain itself has infinite scalability because the work is not done on the blockchain, but on the game channel. So the blockchain can host as many games as it wants, theoretically. There will, however, be a bottleneck for the games being developed, and that is the processor on which each game is built on. Okay, and you say, yeah, of course, that makes sense. But I just wanted to point out that just because the project has theoretical infinite scalability, it doesn't mean that it has a limitless game construction. Now we're going to move to token use. As token investors, we always want to know that there is token use because token value depends on token demand. And in this case, there are many different uh, use cases for the token, as you can see. There's account, you use the tokens for account creation, for account transactions, for purchasing game assets, for renting game assets, for game transactions, for cheap powered crowd sales, and finally for coin transactions. So this is a project with good token economics. This is their team and advisors, and as you can see, it's a very big team. As always, I won't go through all the resumes, but I will go through a couple of you of the resumes for you to have a feel of the team. One member is Dr. Daniel Kraft, who has been involved in Bitcoin development since 2013. Since 2014, he has been the main developer for Namecoin and Huntercoin and successfully re-implemented both on top of the modern Bitcoin core codebase. Where possible, he also contributes improvements back to upstream Bitcoin and is currently the 29th contributor to or the number 29 biggest contributor to Bitcoin Core. He's also published multiple research articles in peer-reviewed journals, including two that are directly related to cryptocurrency. Another one of the team members is Mike Hemberger, who has 20 years of experience as a software engineer and manager. Mike Hanberg is also the current president of Tricky Fast Studios and at Tricky Fast, he's worked on AAA mobile games like Star Trek TM, The Walking Dead, Transformers and Wheel of Fortune. He's also contributed heavily to other games including Grim Dawn, Field Runners, Attack and Prop 
Chokpika Wells. Outside of gaming, Mike was also one of the first employees at Etsy.com and during his time there, he led the development team to scale the site up to 1 billion multi monthly page views. Wow. So some of his other projects include a cryptocurrency algorithmic trading application, a multiverse 3D, and various natural language processing, computer vision, and machine learning applications. So this definitely comes across as a very competent team who definitely know both the gaming and blockchain scene. Feel free to check out each of their profiles on their website. All right, now let's take a look at their token matrix. Taking a look at their token matrix, they have allocated 40.5% to the token sale, which is very reasonable. And then another 10% goes to the company, which is again a very reasonable number. Some unreasonable projects allocate up to 80% of the tokens to the company, which is what you don't want to see. Now, when we are interested in the token price at pre-ICO, uh, we're trying to determine what is the actual token price and the market cap of the company, because this will decide for us whether or not this is worth investing in this ICO. The token price or the market cap is often the make or break in decision making for an ICO investor. Now, I'll start by saying that there is some confusion in the information that they give. Firstly, if you look at the total tokens, uh, available for the pre-ICO, it says that the total token should be 50 million tokens being sold. But when you look at the breakdown on the chart, it only adds up to 35 million. So this is an error. But if you were to look below at the main token sale, okay, the total token number is 100 million. But when you add up the total cap, okay, it's 50 plus 50, which is 100. So then that sum is correct. So there's something wrong in the pre-token um, sale. Secondly, if you look on the actual website where the clock timer is doing the countdown, okay, it says that uh, they are trying to raise 250 Bitcoin and 227 Bitcoin has already been raised. Okay, This is for stage one of the pre-token sale, right? But stage one of the pre-token sale, you can see here, okay, um, the cost of each Chi token is 0 0.000014 Bitcoin and the cap is 7 million Chi tokens being sold. If you multiply that up, that should be 98 um Bitcoin only. So 98 Bitcoin is very different from 250 Bitcoins. So I inquired this discrepancy on their Telegram chat and their admin clarified that the white paper is the right figure and the website is the wrong figure. Uh, but that still doesn't really explain the difference between of whether or not the total token sold in pre-sale is 50 million or 35 million. So I think the team has a bit of clarifying to do uh, or updating of the website to do over this issue. Now, for the sake of estimating the token worth, I have to make some assumptions to do any sort of calculations. So I'm going to go with the figures in the table, the breakdown figures to calculate their worth. Now, if you calculate the total value, okay, the total value of pre-ICO and ICO combined, the total um, amount that they will raise based on today's value of Bitcoin, which is 8,252 US dollars at the time of this recording, then the total total amount that they would raise as a hard cap is $19 million only. $19 million for a ICO and pre-ICO combined is incredibly small. Okay, This would make this project actually a very attractive investment. To give you an idea, right? $19 million in market cap would put this project somewhere in the ranking around 380, which is ridiculous. Okay, 380 is for projects that are so small and like, you know, just simply unheard of, right? If this project as a first gaming blockchain platform uh, was to ever make it into the top 100 coins, then we're talking about a market cap around 170 million at the moment. And that would be almost uh, 9 to 10x gains immediately. So assuming that the current amount that they are raising is 98 Bitcoins in this stage and not 250 Bitcoins, the total distribution and pricing is actually very attractive, but I would recommend clarifying this with the team further. Now, another aspect of any ICO that you want to pay attention to is their social media following. As token investors, what we are interested in is that the token price will rise. This means that we want people to FOMO into this project. The bigger the community, the better, because it means that more people will be unable to get into the ICO because of crowding or country regulation, regulations some, or other reasons. So that means that when the coin actually hits the real exchange market, there will be a lot of people waiting to snatch it up or buy it immediately because they miss out. So now they've all, they're just waiting for it to hit the exchanges to buy in. 
The point of a social media size then is really more relevant to a public ICO at the ICO stage. So we are at the pre-ICO stage. This point I'm talking to you about social media numbers is really more relevant to later when they actually hit the actual public ICO. Um, the reason why it's not so relevant currently in the pre-ICO stage is because a lot of projects don't actually have the money to do the hundreds and thousands of dollars kind of marketing which they need to do. So they need to take the money from the pre-ICO to do that marketing. And this project in their white paper, they have also indicated that a portion of the pre-ICO funds will go to the marketing for the ICO fundraising. Currently, their community is very small. Their Twitter only has about 1,400 followers and their Telegram has about just over 6,000 members. So again, this is all right in the pre-ICO phase. We won't you know, blame them too much for it. But just before the public ICO stage, the numbers that you would want to see is somewhere around uh, 20,000 and above. In fact, popular projects can even go up to 50,000 followers. So if you are watching this video later on, okay, not in the pre-ICO stage, but around the public ICO stage, then looking at their social media following numbers is something you might want to take note of. The last thing I want to point out to you is their roadmap, and this is a very long huddle, guys. The roadmap goes all the way to 2019 second quarter, and then it doesn't end there. It needs to be updated to go on further. But the 2.0 alpha, okay, this is alpha testnet. It's not even beta testnet. It's just alpha. The alpha is only due to be released in the second quarter of 2019, which is one year away. So in the very fast moving market where prices fluctuate a lot, uh, that's a very long time to lock in an investment. But a lot of people who invest in ICOs may not be looking at the roadmap and the tech anyway, right? There's another way of um, playing around with token investments in ICO, and that is to cash out at the point that it hits the exchanges. Because remember how I said at the exchanges, there tends to be a FOMO. So once after a coin is launched, usually if it's popular, uh, the price will rise very steeply. And then that's the time that people who have invested in the pre-ICO can sell the coin. The thing you need to look for as a pre-ICO investor then is whether or not there's a lock-in period. Some projects put a lock-in period so you can't sell your tokens, preventing that sudden dump. But in this project, I don't think there is a lock-in period, which means that if you get involved in the, the pre-ICO, you actually can dump your coins if the coin was to pump in FOMO right after it hits the exchanges, which will happen way before next year, I imagine. In conclusion, guys, I like Chimera. I think that a blockchain gaming platform is a much needed project in the blockchain space and this project will have first movers advantage. They have an experienced and very successful team, but as with any pre-ICO investment, it is always high risk for high returns. The big risk here would be if their team can deliver in the based on the tech in the long term and also if they can pick up their social media awareness by their public ICO date. Otherwise, at the current entry price, if calculated correctly, it is a very attractive entry point. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you like it, give us a like and a subscribe. We also have a very active Telegram group that spots lots of good upcoming coins that I try to cover as many as I can, but the truth is many coins get left out because I simply don't have the time to do video reviews on all of them. So do join our Telegram group to find out what other great upcoming coins they are. Finally, I am trying to raise enough money to do this full-time, to do research and present blockchain projects on YouTube full-time. So if you would like to support me, there is a donation link in the description box below. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Have a super great day wherever you are, and we will catch you guys again very soon.